All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Campfire Talk number six, the uh, the last one of this season called All About Camp Support. And tonight we're going to go through all of the different resources and programs and opportunities that Camp Support provides for uh, TCOs, for campers, for folks that are looking to go to Burning Man, uh, either for the first time or for the 20th time. So uh, one thing I want to do before we get too far into this is talk quickly about meeting guidelines for Campfire Talks. We ask that you please mute your mic if you're not a panelist. Uh, please type your questions in the chat. We have uh, D-Rex who's going to collect those and feed those in. Uh, please be respectful. Please be present. Uh, speak from your own experience, and that will serve us well. All right, so tonight's topic is camp support. And what we wanted to start off by doing is introducing your speakers tonight. And these speakers, uh, each one of them uh, heads up an area inside of uh, camp support. And so maybe I'll, uh, I'll just uh, call you out one by one if you'd unmute and uh, maybe give us a little introduction to yourself. Uh, at the top of my list is PETA. PETA, tell us a little bit about you. Hi, I'm so glad to be here this evening. Um, I'm the volunteer coordinator for the Camp Network, which you'll hear about in a little bit, in a little bit more detail. Um, I've been burning since 2011, and uh, our camp is called Fafa Camp, and this year we'll be at Glimmer in 415. We're very excited. And uh, I live in Sonoma, California, and I'm just uh, glad to be here. Thank so you. shall I toss the ball to somebody else? Sure. Uh, the next person that I see is Sticky Beak. Uh, hi, I'm Sticky Beak. I'm the uh, volunteer coordinator for uh, placements uh, exploration and engagement research squad, which uh, most of you will probably know by his previous name, the Camp Survey Squad. Um, I camp with uh, Astro Headwash, which will be at D515 this year, and I live in Northern Colorado. So, thank you. You want to toss it to someone, Sticky Beak? Uh, Yeti, you're next on my list. Yeti, I think you're muted. Tell us a little bit about you. Still muted. Here I am. There you go. Oh, now you're muted again. There you are. All right, stay unmuted. It's going to be great. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm Yeti. Uh, I've been uh, coming to Burning Man since 2004 and uh, currently the mayor of the BRC HOA uh, will be at four o'clock and F this year. So come on by. We got a bunch of camps that do a bunch of things. Uh, you'll have to look us up for all the details. And uh, I'm on camp support and I, uh, I currently head up the uh, camp advisory and mentorship program or camp for short, uh, which makes for all sorts of confusing because we use the word camp a lot. <laughs> uh, and yeah, looking forward to, to chatting with everybody. Uh, why don't we go to uh, Dilemma is next in my list. Dr. Dilemma. Well, hey there. I've been going to that thing out in the desert since 2004. Didn't take any pictures that year, but I look at pictures of the man that year and I say, oh, it was so adorable that year. You could just put them in your pocket. And it's uh, been interesting to watch the city grow since then. It started a camp called Paradise Motel in 2008. Peter can explain what the flamingos mean uh, later, uh, but you have to ask her about that. Inside the uh, <clears throat> inside joke, sorry. Uh, I've been with the uh, camp support, uh, I think from the start of it. Uh, I mostly answer a lot of questions on the help desk and have been helping with the theme camp symposium for a few years now. And uh, I think I'm gonna toss it to Monday. Actually, before, uh, I think Monday, uh wouldn't be next it would probably be captain vic captain vic tell us about you i threw us all off captain vic you still there oh i don't see him we might have lost him so i will go next uh my name's sandor uh i am a volunteer with camp support i uh head up the burner network efforts which is a, a parallel project to camp support that does grants for camps. We also have a, 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 a map of theme camps across the world that we, uh, we've built through the Google API. 
Uh, I am also with my wife, D-Rex, who she'll introduce herself in just a second. Uh, we head up Hoopla, which is a Houston-based camp that provides breakfast tacos uh, on the playa every morning. Uh, we are on the uh, the nine o'clock side, nine thirty and C this year. So please come on by for some breakfast tacos, and I will toss it to D Rex. D Rex, tell us about you. Hello, everybody. My name is D Rex. Uh, so I've been helping here for a little while on the camp support and camp network. Pretty happy to have you here. Um, been going to Burning Man since two thousand sixteen. I am originally from Colombia, so I kind of lean uh, towards the international part. I love my international people. So welcome. Thank you for being here. And yeah, send the questions. So I'll, I'll ask them at the end. Thank you. D-Rex is uh, going to be our chat moderator. Uh, if you have uh, any questions that you want to feed in on any of these areas, uh, we will get those answered. Um, did Captain Vic make it back or no? Don't see him. Okay, well, that's fine. Well, we'll keep going. So what we have planned for you tonight, um, we have uh, a deck of slides that we're gonna walk through. Uh, we've got a slide for each one of our efforts and we'll have each of these folks uh, explain what they do and uh, how that benefits TCOs and other uh, folks in camps that are in a leadership role and how you can get involved if that's something you're interested in doing. So just a little orientation um, as to kind of how we sort of fit into the, the Burning Man universe. Um, so we are uh, alongside placement, uh, as is peers. Uh, neither one of these two efforts are part of placement, but we all uh, report back in to the same person in Burning Man, the illustrious level, who is the associate director of city planning. Uh, and Level keeps us all kind of uh, working together and uh, in our lanes and uh, making sure that we are uh, helping camps as strongly as we can. The first area that we have up is a camp symposium and uh, I'll, I'll tackle this one first, um, but then quickly hand it off to PETA because this uh, segues nicely into uh, uh, campfire talks and PETA was also heavily involved in planning the symposium this year. So as your Dr. Dilemma, uh, Peter, and myself, there were a group of us um, alongside Papa Bear and uh, Level that helped put together the camp symposium. This is our premier uh, event each year. Um, we just had it back in April. Uh, it was the 11th running, I believe. Uh, 75 volunteers and staff, a full day of uh, content for camps. Uh, we are in the process of uh, taking the recordings of those and putting those online. Uh, in addition to recordings of prior years, trying to organize those a bit uh, better as well so that you can find uh, information about a variety of topics that are interesting to camps from uh, solar to transport to uh, leadership issues to finances, uh, just a huge amount of content uh, that we provide every year. And then if you go back a number of years, the amount of content that uh, in its sort of sum total is pretty amazing. Those videos end up finding a home on Burning Man's YouTube uh, page, it's a YouTube site. Uh, and we're also looking at linking those directly off the Burning Man website. But if you want to take a look at those videos from prior years, those are up now, uh, Burning Man's uh, YouTube page. And then the new Camp Symposium content from this year should be coming soon. We put out a bunch of surveys uh, around uh, the time of the symposium, so call it February, March, January, kind of early on in the year for volunteers. And so if you would like to be involved, we always want to find more people that can be uh, helpful and can be speakers, can be tech moderators. It's a huge undertaking and it's a, a huge part of, of what we do. Peta, anything you want to add on Camp Symposium before taking us into uh, Camp Fire Talks? Um, I don't I don't think so. I think you've covered it all just to emphasize that we're working hard. You know, again, we're a volunteer team. So we're working hard to get the videos um, kind of in a um, uh, state where they can be uploaded and um, that, you know, hoping that we can get that done very uh, soon. The videos from this year's camp symposium. So stay tuned for that. But otherwise, Sandor, I think you covered pretty much everything. I don't have much more to add. Okay, well, then I'm going to flip the slide and Camper Talks. 
All right, so um, as part of the camp network uh, team, um, one of the things that we do is campfire talks, which is a lot like the breakout sessions that we have in the camp symposium. So they're an hour and a half. I mean, you're doing one now. So, and many of you, I recognize some of the names of the participants. I really appreciate you guys participating in the past, but they're an hour and a half or so um, panels of, you know, experts on different topics and uh, how do we get the topics? We get those topics by the feedback forms that we get from our, um, from the participants. So from all of you. So um, just know that we read your feedback and we look at that and look for themes and areas where we can pull together a group of panelists to um, bring you some cutting edge information, we hope. And um, we do them every month or so. I want to say every month or so, because again, being a volunteer effort and things happen um, from November through June or so. And if you want to look at um, some of the uh, past Campfire Talks, they are on the Burning Man org website. Just put in Campfire Talks Burning Man and you'll um, in your search engine and you'll get a link to go there. I think we just have, we have the full season one. Um, we are now completing season two. And I think we have two or three videos up from um, this current season and hoping that those others get up um, soon. Um, different kind of topics that you might find there on sustainability, ask a placer, consent, uh, burning year round, which a lot of us were focusing on during COVID. And our season three will be starting in uh, November or so. That's, that's the plan. So um, yeah, we thank you, Esfan. We, we love doing the campfire talks. I love your enthusiasm about them. And um, yeah, let's just keep communicating because the campfire talks are here just to help, you know, help g uh, give information and to help uh, people connect because you can connect and chat and meet new people and so that's that's about it for campfire talks. Peter, if somebody has a really good idea for a campfire talk, what, what should they do? I would send it to um, <laughs> to the help desk. I think that's basically our clearinghouse for questions. Right? Is um, uh, support uh, camp support uh, email address. And um, then Dilemma can uh, get that to me. And uh, yeah, we love to have your feedback, so. Awesome, and D-Rex, if you could drop that uh, camp support email address in the chat, that would be awesome. And I think there's a, there should be a feedback form at the end tonight um, that also collects that information that we look at. Uh, PETA, somebody that might wanna volunteer for Campfire Talks, what, what sort of roles or, or things would they do or uh, how should they go about getting involved? Excellent. Thank you for asking that question, Sandor. Yeah, this is kind of my uh, recruitment season right now um, between um, uh, now and the burn. And so I believe in the feedback form, there is going to be a question about um, whether or not you'd like to volunteer. And for Campfire Talks, what we're looking for are um, people who will do something like what Sandor is doing right now. So hosting the talk producing the talk, which means planning it. So that might be recruiting panelists while coming up, um, you know, formulating a topic, uh, recruiting panelists, which is awesome. It's actually one of the best things I love to do it because I get to call people and talk to them and learn about what they're doing. And, you know, burners are just so inspiring. Um, so yeah, and then plan the whole talk. We have a run of show. We have a lot of templates. We've really refined the process over the last few years. So we are looking for people to support Campfire Talks in that role, producer, again, what Sandra is doing, and then what D-Rex is doing today as a chat moderator, just watching our, our chat and um, collecting the questions. And then we often have a tech moderator as well, just because those Zoom gremlins that come in from time to time and need to be, I don't know, lassoed or whatever. So, um, yeah, and then just support for ideas and enthusiasm. And what if somebody wants to volunteer for Campfire Talks, but maybe they, they haven't done this sort of thing before or they 
uh, don't feel super confident yet. What you guys have a bunch of training, I assume. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for asking that question. Yeah. We've developed a lot. Like I was mentioning, we've developed a lot of um, documents that really clarify a lot of the roles. And then we've got um, experienced producers. We usually um, pair a, a veteran producer with a new producer to kind of walk through the process for a campfire talk. And um, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty, you know, basic. It just takes some time and focus and some good organization skills and some good communication skills. Good. All right. Well, thank you, Peter. You're welcome. So we'll move on to the next item here. And that's going to be stories from the city. I just want to check one more time if Captain Vic made it back. He might be having some technical difficulties. Captain Vic, if you're here, speak up. All right, no worries. I will tackle stories from the city. So stories from the city, um, it's one of my uh, favorite things to encounter in the Burning Man Journal primarily. Um, these are long form uh, pieces uh, about camp and maybe it's a, a particular uh, challenge that they overcame or it's um, a, a camp's journey from maybe getting started uh, to some uh, issue that they, uh, they, they worked through uh, it might be a camp that does something unique on the playa that other folks are not doing and that deserves a, a spotlight. Uh, sometimes things that people wouldn't normally uh, think about. Uh, one of the camps that we gave a grant to through Burner Network, uh, Camp Luminos, was uh, featured in uh, one of these pieces. And Camp Luminos, uh, it's a camp that, that I love. It's out of Arizona. They have uh, gourds that uh, they grow and then bring the Burning Man and uh, have an area set up where you carve them, you carve out the, uh, the dried gourds and make lanterns, beautiful lanterns uh, to, uh, to take home with you, to, to share with your friends, to gift. Uh, and that's the sort of uh, story that you run across in, in uh, the Burning Man Journal Stories from the City. And they uh, are really a unique format for us and that most of what you find is abbreviated or it's video. But these are, are textual, uh, or they're paragraph long, sometimes uh, with uh, maybe a, a couple pages long, a really in-depth look at what a camp has gone through. The most recent piece that, uh, that I saw was Deadheads and Burners. Uh, it sort of compares what the similarities and differences are between Burners and Deadheads, uh, which I enjoy because I uh, am a little... Uh, I, I did not have the right age to quite uh, follow the dead, but I have some older friends who did, and it was great to, to hear ab about that experience and sync that up with my own burner experience. And so you can find those in the Burning Man Journal. And I know that Captain Vic, who heads up this area for us, he's always looking for ideas uh, for stories. If you're aware of a camp or a situation that deserves a long form piece, uh, please send us an email to camp support at burningman.org. Captain Vic will get that routed to him, especially if you put story idea in the subject or something similar. Um, and he'll take a look at that and follow up with you uh, if it makes sense. And um, that might end up being the next stories from the city. That stories from the city. Let's go forward once. This is the camp resource guide. And Yeti, what I thought, um, since you uh, and your folks were so helpful with the Camp Resource Guide, that maybe you would take this because it's going to flow right into camp. Do you want to tell us about this most recent process with the Camp Resource Guide and what sort of things you can find there? Yeah, sure. I was all ready to talk about it uh, uh, with the camp section and drop in. Hold on. I copied the link and everything. So it's, you got it there. But here, I'll put it in chat. So it's a little easier to grab if you want to go. Uh, so... A while back, Camp Support uh, tackled kind of revamping the Camp Resource Guide, and this year, uh, early on in the year, uh, kind of or late last year, and then early this year, we uh, we tackled it again to reformat it and try to make it clear, uh, make the information clear. Uh, it is a a great compendium of information about you know all the things you might want to consider if you're trying to do a, a camp at Burning Man. Uh, great thanks to Buck, who I think I saw his here, uh, in tackling much of the uh, content you, formatting and editing for this. Yeah, thanks, Buck. Um, 
and uh yeah it's a, it's a place that we often refer people to uh it is sometimes it gets lost on the burning man website uh because there's a lot of information on the burning man website and it is uh there's lots of stuff there and it's really great to be able to point people there and just be like hey check this out you're probably is your answer to your question is probably here uh if it's not we can go further and uh yeah and our goal is to keep that updated every year uh, because things constantly change as well. Yeti, what are some and, of the uh, the categories of info that are in the guide uh so we it's it's been broken out into uh three big categories now so it's uh organizing and leading a camp managing ply logistics it's on the screen over here sorry i'm looking away from everybody <laughs> and uh and other resources um uh, and you'll find, you know, in organizing and leading camp, there's acculturation, consent, leadership, conflict resolution, camp finances, fundraising, camp size, uh, all big, chewy topics to, to dig into. Um, logistics are all the logistics we all deal with uh, all the time. Uh, layout, shade, interactivity, neighbors, sound, all that stuff. Uh, and then the other resources are links to the symposium and other online communities that might be helpful if you don't find what you're looking for here or uh, if you're looking for some more specific information. Um, so, uh, you know, do check it out, uh, uh, bookmark it if people still bookmark things uh, and or leave the tab open for the next three years like I do. And, <laughs> and, um, uh, and yeah, if, if there's, if you have an idea, I get like, you know, like all this stuff, we're all volunteers, we're all just contributing all this, this information. So if you have ideas for something that's missing there or, uh, or something that could be better there, uh, please let us know. Um, we might put you in charge of it. So be ready for that. And, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great, it's a great resource for everybody, uh, new and old burners alike. One of the things that I love that you guys uh, did in the, the most recent round of updates is tying in videos from the symposium, from other places that, because I, I mean, I, 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 I'm a visual learner. I like the videos and I just so thankful that Buck and all you guys that you put those in there because it, it really makes it easy to, to get an overview of a topic like shade or something uh, without having to read through a ton of posts on Facebook or something somewhere. Sure. Yeah. And that's, and that's part of the updating every year too, is there's always new content in other places, right? Like we can't, uh, we can't write the encyclopedia of camping at Burning Man. So we, it's great to be able to link to, to new resources that are coming out and new videos and every, you know, the new symposiums and all that. So, you know, somebody yeah. reads through that guide and they're like, you know what, I've got a better way to do gray water. Well, where should they send that content? How do they uh, get in touch with the folks that put this together and, and see if that might be a good addition? That is, I'm going to give Dr. Dilema even more work. Uh, you definitely send it to the help desk and, <laughs> and, and it will find its way to us. Uh, uh, like Peter said, that is the clearinghouse for camp support. Like just send it there and it'll find the right person and we will, we will get in touch and, and uh, pick your brain or like I said, put you in charge of just writing it and, and getting it, getting it updated when we can. Awesome. And, and if somebody, this is just the area that they are very passionate about giving back to Bernie man and they want to be part of your volunteer team and help like Buck did, what, what should they do? Uh, they should uh, fill out the survey at the end of the, the, the talk here and let us know that they're interested in volunteering and we can get them in. And then I think, I think that's the right place, right? PETA. <laughs> Yeah, and Daisy has, or D-Rex has uh, put in just the, um, the I think, the volunteer form as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, yeah. Great. There is a volunteer form that they can fill out, people can fill out. Uh, awesome, yes. All right, Yeti, I'm going to move over to the camp slide now. Cool. Let's do it. Uh, all right. So the Camp Advisory Mentorship Program, we started that in uh, 2018, kind of like a little pilot version where each of us that were on the, the, the main camp support group took on a couple of camps. Uh, and it was really just a way to, uh, to be a sounding board and sort of see, you know, help some camps smooth out any rough edges they had uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, just offer suggestions here and there and help them do things better. Uh, and then the, the following year, 2019, we expanded that and brought in a whole group of volunteer advisors uh, who are all just other 
uh, theme camp organizers. And, uh, and then also put a call out for other camps that needed help with something. Uh, we still, uh, if I remember right, in 2019, we still limited it to, uh, uh, to existing camps. We weren't, we were kind of like letting camps that were going for the first time figure it out on their own. And just sort of helping existing camps or camps that have been there a year, like try to sort out some things. And and that, you know, when we uh, uh, when we bring uh, camps and advisors together, the goal is to uh, just provide them, again, a sounding board, a resource for, uh, hey, do you think this is a good idea? Hey, how might we do this? And we don't want to be too prescriptive. We don't want the advisors to be too prescriptive in how to do things, and they're really just there to kind of guide the camp and and help them uh, with whatever they're trying to do. And uh, and then of course uh, we were quite quiet for the two years with everybody else, uh, and and now we're ramped back up again, and we have uh, 28 camps that are currently working with advisors uh, on a variety of issues: uh, infrastructure, fundraising, uh, logistics, interactivity. Uh, anything that they might just be struggling with a little bit or just not sure how to do. Um, some folks just need help filling out their placement questionnaire and then they're good to go. Uh, uh, and it's, it, it is a wide, and then, you know, we started taking first time camps as well. So it's, uh, camps are like, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Where, <laughs> where should I even look? What should I do? What are the next steps? Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll, we're collecting more data this year to try to get a better sense of how the, the program is working. And uh, we're always looking for uh, TCOs who might wanna be advisors. And again, email the help desk and just let us know. And then we'll, we have uh, a little intake form that we send you to kind of gather your information. Uh, and, uh, and you may see it called out every so often in the, uh, Jackrabbit Speaks or other places that we are looking for camps or advisors to come into the program. And uh, yeah, I think it was a little rambly, sorry, but I think that's basically the program. <laughs> it's a good overview. Uh, you know, um, I was a, a mentor in that program um, working with Yeti and it's, it's really, um, it's a really a, a, a unique resource that allows you to get help I mean, so let's say that you start by looking at the camp resource guide and you try and find it on your own. You're like, ah, I still don't quite understand this area. Maybe you toss a question into camp support uh, to the help desk and, uh, you know, you get an answer back there. And it's still just, it's a topic where you need some help and you, you need to be able to ask questions and get responses back. And, and maybe it's something that takes a couple months to, to get sorted out. Uh, and I, I tell you that the program that Yeti runs is, is fantastic for that. Yeti, um, uh, and, go, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was, I was just gonna say one of the big areas that we found it to be really successful is with international burners and just trying yeah. to overcome the hurdles of getting to Burning Man from far away. Uh, um, I'm in Southern California, so it's relatively easy. Uh, I can only imagine what it's like getting here from uh, from anywhere else. <laughs> uh, Yeti, uh, people uh, ask sometimes what, uh, what are the limits of what you guys can help with? Uh, what, what are some of the things that you, you can't really help with when it comes to camp? Um, uh, you know, there are, there are times, uh, uh, I will say, uh, I'm, I meant to say this up front. We, you know, uh, I'm glad Sandra put that little graph up ahead of time. Cause we are not, we are not part of placement and we try to keep a, a little bit of a firewall between the, the camp program and, uh, and placement. Uh, for most camps that just need help with uh, Place, placement is your parents for your cool aunts and uncles. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, you know, we want camps to be able to be honest with their advisors and not worry about uh, whether it'll affect their placement or somehow affect um, anything else. And then we just want them to be honest and clear and, and get real help. So, uh, you know, for, for camps with uh, let's just call them day-to-day -day issues, uh, there's no, there's no communication with placement. It's just, uh, unless of course there's something really egregious going on, something super illegal, uh, or horrible, um, that we're like, Oh, this, somebody needs to know about this cause this can't be going on. Um, and, uh, but otherwise it is a, it is a separate thing for placement just so that they can get help and get, and get to the playa and be successful as a theme camp. Uh, there are times when, 
a camp will come to us through placement and that's a little bit different we handle that a little bit differently and separately from the other camps so that we do uh we, because they, they have a more serious issue going on so we do work camps with that aren't in good standing uh, camps that aren't in good standing uh or have an, a, just other serious problem uh, and we have a, a group of advisors that have uh we've identified as kind of our um uh, re ready for a bigger challenge advisors because <laughs> there are some big challenges out there and so those but those camps you know that advisor may uh may be in touch with placement and that's been clear up front with those camps and uh, the to say if, for things that we won't tackle it's it's really it's really about being again just being a sounding board being a resource and being helpful but not ever you know the advisor should never do something for the camp like there's the and the camp should never rely on the advisor for them to do something. Uh, it should be very much like, why don't you try this? And then the camp goes off and tries it and then reports back and says how they did. Um, so, you know, we don't, you know, we never want to tell people how to Burning Man. We want them to go and do their own thing and be their own camp and, uh, and make it look and be amazing. Um, uh, you know, if they're like, what's the best shelter to build? And we're like, what do you have in the garage? Like, <laughs> like we're not going to tell everybody to build a dome because then we just become uh, a city where everything looks the same. And we don't want that. Great. Well, thank you, Yeti. Surely. All right. Uh, help desk. So we've been uh, talking about the help desk all night already. Uh, but Dr. Dilemma, why don't you tell us a bit about it? Hello, folks. I'm Dr. Dilemma. And I help coordinate the camp support help desk along with some other folks. I like to say that I've pretty much done everything you can possibly do wrong as a theme camp lead, uh, save for actually blowing it up. So I'm a great font of knowledge of, of, of what not to do. So that's what qualifies me the job to begin with. As you can imagine, we get all sorts of questions every year. The most common are from my Nigerian princess. Okay, tough crap. Um, before <laughs> camp support hey, placement uh, in the inside, before camp support placement uh, would get a lot of the how-to questions. And I remember uh, when Trippy was first starting the, the camp support group, uh, this was a big function they we'd like to see uh, taken off of uh, placement. Um, so we'll try to help, help answer these questions, sometimes many, many times, the same question over and over. Often I'll end up sending a link to the camp resource guide. And I think once they get in on the guide and realize it's there, they, we don't hear from them again because they, it's, an, it's an excellent guide. Um, and, but I have been told I'm not allowed to start any uh, reply with bless your heart anymore. Uh, now, if I don't know the answer to a question, uh, I've got folks I can reach out to um, and, uh, there are some other departments I could send to um, uh, if they're they're asking some very specific questions about uh, fuel. Uh, I can send them to heat. Uh, uh, sometimes I do feel like a glorified switchboard operator, but that's kind of what we're here for. Uh, and then they might be asking questions about why was I not placed, you know, and those will get uh, sent to placement uh, for them to answer. Uh, some of the most difficult questions I get. Uh, is when folks are, are giving me questions along the line of, um, hi, I'm the administrative assistant for this very important person, uh, and I need to know what contractor I can hire to build the camp for us. And- uh, uh, Bad Diplo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 actually, uh, uh, a thing can't leave front of mine, uh, got Diplo one year and made him wash dishes. He said, am I gonna spend? No, you're washing dishes. Uh, so for all, all I know is that he washed dishes that year. Um, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's not much we can do. And, and there are, you know, videos I can send him. Uh, we, there was a lot of stuff that we did with cultural direction study we can send their way, but uh, uh, that's about all we can do. Uh, now, obviously, as, as we spoke of, if the camp, like really needs ongoing help, uh, that's when we send them over to Yeti and uh, try to get them into the camp support program. And then there's some questions that we just like, hey, can't help with that. And basically uh, there are, we get some around camp politics. I don't know, I, there's some letters that, that are just so, so long 
and like listen, we cannot, I cannot, you know, get and and placement can't either. Really get in the middle of camp politics. So, um, uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll try to find you the right person to get to. And uh, so I end up being the what was that Lily Tomlin character with the switchboard operator? Yeah. <laughs> you you really are our our front door for everything yep. that we do. Yep. Well, um, when when someone tries to think about, well, gosh, I, should I email camp support about this or should I email placement about this? What's your advice on, on how to choose between those two destinations for a question? Well, um, I can get over placement so easy that it may as well send to me. But, you know, the thing to remember is I'm a, I'm a camp lead myself. Uh, is a question that, it, that someone's camp lead likely to know. You know, uh, I didn't know the, where my camp was placed until everybody else did, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, uh, in doubt, just send it to us and we'll get it off to placement. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, 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 folks that are uh, keeping an eye on the queue. There's uh, uh, Pop Bear from placement uh, helps keep an eye on the queue too, and he'll, he'll grab them and pull them over placement land. So it's not a big deal either way. And is there, there any sort of um, camp oriented questions that uh, you don't answer or that they, some, someone shouldn't route to camp support or to placement? Uh, in internal politics, you know, anything that's like, I'm uh, the camp, you know, the, our, our camp leads stole all our stuff. And, um, uh, and, you know, we haven't, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, just internal camp politics, there's, there's, there's not a darn thing we can do. So that, that would be my main thing. Fair enough. And if somebody wants to be a fellow switchboard operator with you, how do they do that? How do they get involved and help with uh, the help desk? Uh, just uh, fill out the usual form that I think we've already pasted uh, to say that you want to volunteer. Uh, it helps if you've uh, had some experience as a, a camp lead and, and uh, uh, can uh, uh, Google something for people. <laughs> if, you've spent, if you've spent a lot of time going through uh, the different resources yourself, uh, that might be helpful too. Great. Anything else you want to add? I'm very excited to see all your dusty, dusty faces out there this year. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Deloma. So uh, this kind of brings us to uh, to my effort, which is, is Burner Network. Burner Network is a side project to camp support. Um, it's a separate 501c3 that uh, is all volunteer. It's populated by a lot of people that also volunteer for camp support. It's got its own website um, that you see here, burnernetwork.org. We do two things. Um, one, uh, the camp honoraria program I will talk about in just a second. That's grants for camps. And then the other thing that we do is the burner mapping project. So um, one of the things that we noticed when you go through the Burning Man website is that it's really hard to find camps, even if you somehow navigate your way to the Teen Camp Guide. It's tough sometimes to find uh, the uh, camps in whatever area that you want. Uh, we worked with uh, placement and with level to get a search bar added and with, um, with PETA and uh, camp network to get a search bar added uh, to the theme camp listing so that you can at least type that in. But it, it really became clear that it, it, it'd be a lot easier if just like you use any sort of Google maps that you could pull up a Google map for all the Burning Man camps and zoom in on a geography and see all the camps that are in that area. So during the break, we loaded uh, 2019 theme camp data in there. That's all in there. You can find it by going to burnernetwork.org. Uh, and there'll be a link called the, the Burner Mapping Project. And we're about to start adding in the uh, this year's data, the 2022 data. And if you noticed uh, on the placement application, um, there's there are a few new questions. One of them was to pick a hometown. Well, that hometown is what we're going to use uh, to map uh, camps and make it easier to find folks. And we're going to add other stuff to that. We're going to add um, camp. Uh, we're going to add uh, art honorary projects so you can see where those are geographically. Um, we're going to slowly over time add stuff like Burners Without Borders, um, 
uh, chapters. We're going to add uh, just a whole manner of things. But the idea is that if you're in, you know, such and such Idaho, that you can type that in and see all of the burner stuff that's going on around you. So that's uh, the burner mapping project. Let me flip ahead to the Camp Honor Area Program. And, and this is, if you went to the symposium, you saw the same sort of content. But what this does is we wanted to come in and try and fill a hole. And that's, Burning Man gives out a million dollars every year to uh, big art, to art projects uh, that end up on the playa. And that's the, the Black Rock City uh, Arts Program, Honor Area Program. But something like that doesn't exist for camps, at least uh, didn't until we created this last year. So we provide uh, currently one to $5,000 grants to Burning Man camps. And uh, it's really to help camps get back to Playa. So there are a lot of camps uh, over the last uh, year, two years that have struggled with not having Burning Man and no dues or no um, income coming in. And even paying for storage and, and things of that nature have made it tough. And so we have been uh, handing money out to these camps to, to get them uh, through and hopefully back to Playa, uh, to get their storage costs paid to, to get their art and their education back out. Um, so, you know, if this is something that you would like to be involved in, we've raised $33,000 so far towards a 50K goal. Um, we're always taking donations um, and you can do, you can donate money in any, any amount is fine, a dollar is fine, to at burnernetwork.org. But we're also looking for people to help give out the grants. And most of our grant committee is TCOs. And we uh, have a lot of conversations with other TCOs. And uh, sometimes it's money that we end up giving them. Sometimes it's a, a link or a, a connection uh, for cheaper water or for something that might help them. Um, and if that's a sort of, is that your jam and you want to come help us with that, we'd love to have you. Uh, and then, you know, we're always looking for more applicants. So if you have a camp right now and you're like, man, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars would really help us get over the hump so that we can get our camp back out to Playa, apply. We, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to have a conversation. Um, you know, we just take money in and we get it right back out. That's, a, that's the reason that uh, we have this program. We want to support you. And we want to make sure as many camps can get out there as, as can. All the donations are tax deductible to 501c3. So um, all of those nice bells and whistles also exist. So that's Burner Network. Um, Level has asked me a couple of times to always talk about the camps that we've given money to. So I'll just kind of hit these really quickly. So Gender Blender, um, it deals with a, a lot of workshops on gender uh, issues, Camp of Mystic Toys. Uh, this is an open camping camp. So um, they're, I think, a place camp this year, but heretofore they've been in open camping and they do holiday ornaments and they deliver cookies. Uh, camp Luminos, I talked about earlier. These are the folks that make gourds. Uh, Northwest Mist, um, they uh, have a misting tent uh, previously on the playa. I'm not sure where they're placed just yet but uh, they've got a lot of Northwest art inside this tent as well. Uh, Die With Dignity, uh, they make these uh, tie-dyed scarfs. Uh, so you can go to their camp and create some, some nice art. Land of Monkey, uh, they have a lot of really cool uh, TED, type, uh, TED Talk type um, uh, programs and educational seminars. You can see a bunch of people there for one of, uh, one of those in this photo. And then we also support mutant vehicle camps. So uh, Disco Balls, uh, this is their... Uh, their mutant vehicle, the Boogie Bug. Uh, and so we are supporting them uh, this year as well, helping them get their art cart back out to the playa. So again, that's Burner Network. Um, before we uh, sort of end here though, uh, and that was kind of all the camp support stuff, I wanna go all the way back to the beginning to Pierce. And I wanna give uh, Sticky Beak an opportunity to talk about our sister effort, formerly the camp survey squad uh, called Pierce. Sticky Beak, tell us about Pierce. Uh, yeah, well, like you said, it, you know, I think a lot of people have uh, already encountered the Camp Survey Squad. We changed the name for a variety of reasons. Um, basically, we are what it sounds like. We're peers. You're, you know, a lot of our volunteers are themselves TCOs. Uh, turns out, doing a shift with us is a great way to get out of camp and let other people deal with stuff for a while. Um, but you know, it's participants, and we just send people out. Uh, they got in teams of two, and they you know, come out visit. We try to visit every camp on planet. Uh, and they ask a few questions, you know, how was your placement this year? You know, 
is there somebody in your neighborhood that's just doing an awesome job of interactivity? Questions like that. Just having a conversation, understanding how it's going for your camp, for the neighborhood, and then bringing that back. Because if you think about it, there are 1,600 plus camps on Playa, 1,200 plus theme camps. There are about 20 places. So, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a clear limit there in how much time you can spend in any place. So we kind of augment that. We, we go out, we find out what's going on. You know, we want, even if we're going out there and we've got discover this camp, it's just blowing everybody away. And it's amazing. We want people to know about that. Because if this camp is having a little trouble, we want to come back and make sure, hey, yeah, let's get somebody out there to go out and help, help sort it out, that kind of thing. So really, you know, we're not out there judging you. We're not out there, you know, doing anything to do with your standing. We are not placers. We're not, nothing to do with that. Or just coming out and having a conversation and bring it back so that hopefully that stuff, you know, if there is something that needs to be figured out, it can happen while everyone's still around and we can just, you know, people can have a conversation. So, and that you get celebrated when you're doing great stuff, which is what most people are doing out there. So. Thank you. And if folks are interested in getting involved in peers and to, to maybe be someone who's uh, helping organize that or, or even going out and visiting camps, um, how do they do that? Sure. Well, there is a interest form. It was, it was in the most recent placement uh, newsletter. I will put it in chat right here. Thank you. Uh, and you can also email if you have just questions. Uh, that email is still camp survey squad <laughs> at burningman.org. Uh, you know, that may change eventually, but who knows how long that'll take. Um, for now, that for the indefinite future, how, however, that should work. And honestly, you'll probably get me on the other end of the radio. Great. Well, thank you, Sticky Beak. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I mean, it's a lot of fun. You know, would absolutely love to have all of you join us. And if you've got people in your camps or in your friend networks that want to do it, that'd be great. Fantastic. I, I highly recommend it because it gets you out of your own darn camp for a few hours and makes it, it makes it go out and see some of this. I hate to say it. Raise your hand if you've done that. Raise your hand if you've done that. It's like the last week, last day of Playa. And you're like, oh my God, have I got out of my own camp? Admit it. It's one of the reasons I first volunteered for it, in fact, was to get out of camp. <laughs> Good. Well, that's um, uh, sort of the overview of each of the areas that we have. So I'm going to stop sharing uh, these slides. But I did have a poll that I wanted to uh, to run by you guys. And uh, oh, it looks like this poll, someone logged in uh, to the placement account and it, uh, it erased my poll. But uh, let, me, uh, let me just sort of have folks in chat. If you have interacted with any of these areas before, uh, type the name in chat, type the name of the area. Uh, if you've uh, used the help desk or if you've been to the symposium or if you've uh, sort of seen Camp Survey Squad in your camp, uh, just give us a little message in chat and let us know that, uh, that you've done that. Stigaby, can you tell us what the acronym PEERS stands for again? Uh, yes, uh, and I also saw another question there. Um, for those of you who already filled out the form, yeah, uh, we're, we're getting there soon. He's trying to collect everything first. Uh, we've got the training about ready to go. We'll figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, PEERS stands for placements. Uh, <laughs> let me try this again. Placements Exploration and Engagement Research Squad. Uh, we wanted something that was, you know, obviously we don't say that all the time. We just say PEERS. Uh, the reason we changed Camp Survey Squad led to some confusion because, you know, survey is already used for the folks who lay out the city after the Golden Spike. Uh, survey also got, you know, people thought we were census. And honestly, you'd be amazed how many people wrote in and thought we were a theme camp called Survey Squad and wanted the camp with us. So we were hoping that peers might solve some of those issues and also just kind of reinforce that, yeah, we are peers for out of life. You know, we're just out to come out and check you out and have fun and have a bit of a conversation. Great. Well, I'm seeing in chat, I'm seeing a fair number of people who have been to the symposium. Oh, we've got a camp support volunteer. We've got um, someone who's going to apply to Burner Network. Um, that's, you know, really why we're doing this tonight is, is we want to encourage you guys to take advantage of this stuff. We're all volunteers. Um, we're all doing this uh, for you. And we want you to, to take advantage of, the, of these resources. They're, they're here for you. And if you don't use them, then no one does. 
Um, questions. Does anyone have questions for any of these folks or about any of these programs? If you, you do, toss those in the chat and we will uh, we'll get, those, uh, get those answered for you. Anything along the lines of, hey, I've got this particular thing. Is this a, a good fit for what you guys do? Anybody? We'll get that go for a second. While we're waiting, I, I do have a question for you, Sticky B. Um, you know, as, as you think about um, uh, camps getting visited uh, every year, is it, it should be the expectation that you are going to have someone from peers come by and what's the right way for a TCO to interact with the peers folks? Uh, well, it's as much about the peers folks interacting with the TCO the right way. Um, yeah. You know, if we're still working up to it, where we actually get to everybody, every single camp on play every year, but in general, yeah, you should expect that there's likely to be a couple to come by and they'll have an iPad and they'll identify themselves. They're not secrets at all. You know, they'll ask a few questions. They'll, you know, they should ask to take pictures of your frontage because that'll get tied in. So placement, when they need to go review stuff, they can see that. Um, you know, we've got this nice app that does all that for us, I hope. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so it's it's really, it's just a conversation. And if you've got something, you know, going on, you know, most of it's pretty simple. I mean, some of them are actually, you know, how'd you like your placement? One to seven, I think it is. Uh, but if there's something going on, you know, whether it's in your neighborhood, it's your camp, tell them about it. Uh, you know, that's not your only conduit. You can, you know, you can come radio placement. You can come to the, there'll be a placement office on Playa this year. You can come visit that, but you can also tell the CSS folks. Now, I will say if it's really critical, go tell placement first. <laughs> you know, these are volunteers from around the city. How well they communicate that back may sometimes be an issue. So if it's, if it's super critical, a direct line is probably better. But in general, yeah, if, if stuff's going on I and mean, you think somebody's doing a great job, you know, I have a question, you know, bring it back. And, you know, we do kind of a debrief at the end of every shift and try and filter all that in so that uh, places can follow up if they need to. Very good. Thank you. Uh, D-Rex, uh, I think we have a question. Yes, we have a couple of questions here. First question is, for you, Sandor, uh, are there still burner network funds available for this year? Yes. We uh, have a rolling cycle. Um, every three months, we start, uh, we sort of stop, um, taking applications or we, we sort of say, who are all the people that have come up to this point? And those are the people that we pull off into a separate spreadsheet and that we consider uh, for that cycle. Uh, but people that we don't give a grant to and anybody else that comes in since then, we roll everybody into the next uh, cycle, every, next three month cycle. So we're constantly looking at all the people that have applied that we haven't given money to and the people that have come in when we begin a new cycle. All right. Next question from uh, Frolic or Sticky B. I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, when will you get back to those that already filled out the questionnaire to help out? Uh, that will absolutely be soon. Uh, give me maybe another couple of weeks. I, it's, it's, I'll, I'll try and actually just send out a message to let you know I'm doing it. I, I have probably been over to do that. Thank you for the reminder. Uh, in terms of actually setting up the trainings and signing up for the shifts, I don't get trained on ship work in a couple of weeks. So you know, that'll be a little further out, but we'll get there. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next question from Jamie for Yeti. Curious about how many camp advisors you have and how many camps are being mentored? Uh, yeah, we currently have 24 advisors and we have 28 camps that are being mentored. So some of the advisors are doubled up on some of you the- You could use some more mentors, out. huh? We could use some more mentors, of course. Uh, and But we do have some, you know, because so, like I was saying, some folks just need a little bit of help and a little bit of guidance. And once you kind of point them in the right direction, they're off and running and they're good. So there are some advisors that are willing to double up uh, on some camps. And uh because I forgot in my main section, I wanted to say thank you to Buck, Greg, Captain Vic, uh, and Impulse, who are all volunteers on the camp lead team that helped me hey uh, deal with uh, the camp program. And Papa Bear, who's uh, always around helping camp support in all of our efforts. So, uh, sorry, I forgot to say that earlier. Thank you for that. And thank you for those volunteers. Uh, D-Rex? 
Okay, James asks, uh, can the camp support program specifically assist camps in achieving placement and or store tickets allocation? Uh, I'll take that one. The answer is no. Help desk. Those go to placement. Those go right to the placement uh, folks. So they can come into us. That's fine. But I'm going to send them right to placement. And then Yeti, what does camp do for camps that are applying for placement for the first time? Uh, we we try to help them. Yeah, yeah, they, they can absolutely ask for a mentor. And a lot of them are uh, just want to make sure they filled out their placement uh, uh, questionnaire correctly. And um, there we have also had a lot of, in the camp intake form, a lot of folks saying, we need tickets. And of course, we can't help you with tickets. Yeah, uh, can't help but, you with tickets. Uh, it, is, it's a, it is a common, uh, obviously a common theme, uh, and I'm sure will be for a, a while, uh, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we'll gladly take new camps. And, you know, even if you're, we'll even, we'll take camps that are not placed. You don't need to be a placed camp to, to join camp. Uh, uh, we will gladly help you get there and get set up and figure out how to do it without uh, going the official placement route. And a camp that maybe didn't get all the tickets that they hoped for, and now they're trying to figure out their finances and all that sort of stuff. I, I believe that's something camp could help with as well, right? Yeah, we do have folks who are great with, with finances. Uh, it, it's not me. And uh, fundraising and, and just dealing with uh, some of those other uh, logistics. When you fill out the, um, when you fill out the camp uh, questionnaire as either a, uh, a camp or an advisor, we have some questions where you kind of rate yourself on how good you are with certain things. And that helps us uh, really match up camps. A lot of folks are like, I'm a one with fundraising or I'm a five with interactivity. And we know that, the, so we can kind of like spot where you need help and we can hook you up pretty quick. Great. And then just cause I see it just come across uh, D-Rex. Um, someone just asked, Steven just asked, how do camps find a mentor again? Yeah, do you want to take that one more time? Yeah, yeah. you can uh, uh, send an email to camp support at uh, burningman.org and uh, and Dilemma will direct you to me and I will get you the intake, uh, the camp intake form to fill out so that we can uh, get all your info and then find you the right person. Great. Uh, D-Rex, I think we have just a couple more questions. Should, should we clear them off? Yes, uh, one person asked, how do, oh, okay, you asked that one. What's the report like for those grants? I think that question was for you, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, yeah, so um, reporting is uh, pretty straightforward. We have a short, a Google application where you tell us about your camp. Uh, there's an interview that you do with a group of TCOs. That's the grant committee. Um, and then we construct um, basically a, a short plan on how you're going to spend the grant. Um, we model our effort off of the, um, the Black Rock City Art Honorarium Program. So the documents are, are very similar to that. Um, there's minimal reporting, uh, but a little bit of reporting. And uh, we come out and visit you and uh, we have a, a big happy hour for all our, our grant winners and all for our camp support folks too. So uh, we want to kind of create a community and get people together. But in terms of a bunch of paperwork or a bunch of uh, intrusive uh, type reporting, we don't, we don't do a lot of that. The goal is to help you, uh, not to add to your burden. D-Rex, anything else? I think the last question we have is from Douglas Costa. He's asking, is placement still be in, being informed? Is placement being informed? Um, I guess, there, Douglas, maybe clarify that. Uh, being informed about uh, interactions with the, uh, the mentoring program or uh, placement still, announcements still going out? I think all the placement, I don't know if Papa Bear is still out there, but I think all the placement announcements have been published, except for the people maybe that have applied for uh, an appeal. Uh, Papa Bear, I don't know if you're still with us. Maybe you could answer that. Yeah, I, I'm here. I just uh, don't. And the, the question needs more clarification. Yeah, it looks like Monday answered um, not mutant vehicle or art sport camp. So if you're either one of those, you uh, that placement has not gone out yet, Douglas. All, all theme camps and villages have gotten it. And if you didn't get that email, please email us. We had some refiring problems or some firing problems on the on the initial announcement. So if you haven't gotten it, just email placement at bringman.org and we'll refire your announcement to you. So you have it. Thank you, Papa Bear. D-Rex, any other questions? Um, yeah, I think the last question, I don't know if you answered that, Margarita asked, have you sent out the emails to the camps regarding allocated tickets yet? I think you already answered that. To new camps? Um, a little outside of our scope, but we've lost our help desk person. So I'm going to kick this right back to any 
Monday or anyone else that's out there or pop there that can answer this, um, have the uh, steward or the second uh, uh, or whatever you're calling the tickets for new place camps. Is there any information about that yet? Oh, I was distracted. What was the question? <laughs> Ticket information um, uh, for yeah. new camps. Is oh, for new camps, it's coming soon. Um, there's lots of, sorry, there's a wood chipper next door. There's lots of, uh, there's lots of, uh, <clears throat> work to do around that it's not just new camps but also the ride program and other things and so the spreadsheets are being built and figured out and we'll be reaching out um i think it's the end of this month or early july great thank cool. you Papa. well that's our time guys uh thank you so much for joining us um drex has linked um our feedback form in the chat drex if you'll link that one more time we really appreciate you guys spending some time filling this out telling us about uh, what you're, you're interested in, what you wanted more out of this that we didn't provide you. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering, it's a great way to, to connect with us and, and let us know what's on your mind. Um, we uh, are finishing a whole season uh, of Campfire Talks. Peter, I don't know if you want to say anything to take us out of the Campfire Talks season. Yes, thanks everybody for participating. We are here for you. We look forward to our next season, season three. And I really look forward to seeing a lot of you out there on the playa. Make sure that, you know, if you come to Fafa camp, that you introduce yourselves, tell me that you've done a campfire talk and just can't wait to connect even further. So just thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Peter. 